Strap in for the world's fastest half hour. You're on the straight line, presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. And brought to you by Hercules Tires and Grunt Style Apparel. Now, here are your hosts, Robbie Mays and Doug Herbert. Hello again and welcome to another edition of The Straight Line here on MRN.com. As always, we are presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. I'm Robbie May sitting in once again for Marty Huff, who is a little under the weather this week, uh, so we give him the day off. Next to me, Doug Herbert, as it's a hard always. Way to get a day off. It is. It's a very <laughs> bad way to get a day off, especially if you know what uh, Marty's got right now. How are I, I feel like you know we, we did the show two weeks in a row. I take a week right. off and then and I'm back again. We're it's back. like I got to remember how to do this. Yeah, I think you got it. I think okay. you got it down. So Gainesville was good. We had Gainesville some fast cars, 200 mile an hour motorcycle. We're going to have uh, Hector Rana Jr. with us on the show, as well as Funny Car winner Jack Beckman. Uh, so we're in for win for a great show. We were talking before we went on the air today, Doug. It took seven years and five days from for, <laughs> from Pro Stop Motorcycles to go from 199 to 200. Yeah. And then it took Hector Arana about seven hours to go from 200 to 201. So they found something in the offseason. They are on it right now. They definitely found something. And like last week, talking with Eddie Craywick on the phone, he kind of indicated that he thought there were several uh, of the Pro Stock Motorcycle drivers that could break 200. And then it ends up Hector Arana Jr. was the only one that did it. And like I said, went 201. So, yeah, they they definitely found something over yeah. the winter there. But then at the end of the day, it was still the Harley in the winter circle and both the Harleys in the final uh, for the race, so you know, I guess it's kind of starting out right where they ended up last year. I was going to say Eddie Craywick won the Pro Stock Motorcycle Division over Andrew Hines. Uh, Hector Ronder Jr. went out in the first round against uh, Corey Reed. We won't ask him about that, but we'll definitely yeah. ask him about 200 miles per hour. Also on the show today, Jack Beckman picks up the win in Funny Car um, over the weekend, defeated Matt Hagen, who had a pretty adventurous Sunday afternoon. In his backup uh, car. In his in the backup final car. Round. Yeah, yep. in, in the final round. But, but Jack Beckman, they call him fast Jack, Be Jack Beckman for a reason. He's fast again. He's fast again. And you know what? Beckman's a great guy. We've had him on the show quite a few times. And uh, it was an emotional win there. His crew chief, uh, John Medlin, son, Eric Medlin, uh, you know, uh, tragically uh, was killed in a crash uh, in, a, in an incident down at Gainesville years ago. John Medlin had not been on a team that had won Gainesville since then. So, really emotional. Great win for uh, Jack Beckman and his team. We'll talk to him a little bit about that. Other news coming out of Gainesville, Doug. Uh, the, the first time we saw the penalty for crossing the center line, I believe it was Steve Torrance on Sunday afternoon. He was the first one to get assessed a five-point penalty for crossing that center line. That rule was put into place last week by the NHRA. Uh, we talked about Hector Arana uh, Jr. becoming the first to go over 200. He also went over 201 miles an hour. And that's big because early on Friday, Denzo Sparkplugs put out a deal to where the first person to go over is going to get a $10,000 bonus, and it's up to five, the first five motorcycles to go over 200 will get this bonus oh. well Hector Rana won it twice already so there are three there are three uh, ten thousand dollar uh, oh prizes wow left. I didn't so, realize so, how that worked yeah so so he, he got it first and we talked about uh, Matt Hagen having the issues on Sunday afternoon Robert Hyatt and Matt Hagen were going down the racetrack just fine as they could be and then like within about a half a second of each other both cars go boom uh, I believe it was uh, round three on Sunday afternoon, but both mm -hmm. cars had problems. John Force had problems on Sunday again. Just, I, I, I don't know what's going on, but obviously there's something up with uh, with. Well, the funny I think cars something right needs now. to change. I, obviously, they're, they're, the engines are blowing up even when things are running fine. I was talking to my buddy Jim Oberhofer, uh, crew chief for Doug Coletta, and he he seems to think that it's just they're building a big bomb now. The, the fuel pumps are much bigger. The main thing is the superchargers are so much better that it's allowing the, the uh, fuel pumps to be bigger and allowing the engines to make a lot more power. So his uh, suggestion for fixing the problem was make them take all of their uh, blower modifications, you know, basically go back to stock GMC-style supercharger cases, and that would fix the problem. And he's probably right because he said that's really the only thing that's changed in the last 10 years, and yet, you know, the cars are going a lot faster than they were 10 years ago yes. with that one change, the supercharger change. So, um, you know, he's, he seems to think, I hope I'm not talking out of school here, but he seems to think that, that uh, NHRA is a little bit weary of making a change because they don't want to make any of the owners mad because if you think about it, you got John Force, Don Schumacher, and Connie Coletta, and that's about 75% of all your cars out yeah. there. So they, you know, NHRA has to be very thoughtful of, of making a change like that that could 
you know, I mean, I think it's an even change. It's, it's going to be the same change for everybody, but that's what he's worried about, apparently. The other story to come out of Gainesville over the weekend, Richie Crampton, who last year at this time, I believe he, was, he wasn't was even participating, and now he's in the winner's circle at one of the biggest races of the year, the Gator Nationals. Yeah. It's a pretty big deal for Richie Crampton to come back and get the win on Sunday, too. Very big deal. Yeah, I read an article that was saying uh, Richie Crampton watched last year's race on TV, and then uh, he goes down there, wins this year's race, in a Coletta, one of the Coletta-powered cars, and, and gets to the winner's circle. Obviously, uh, you know, a, a great time for that. So yeah. I don't think, uh, you know, Connie Coletta cars winning two of the first three races. Boy, not a bad uh, performance from the Coletta crew. Yeah. Three races in, a lot of news has been happening, and, you know, it's, it's going to be May before we know it. You know, April is, is a couple of weeks away. It's going to be May. And then it's going to be a Memorial Day weekend. And if you don't have plans for Memorial Day yet, you need to go right now to country500.com and get your tickets for the Country 500 at Daytona International Speedway. That's Memorial Day weekend, May 25th, 26th, and 27th. Dirks Bentley, Chris Stapleton, Toby Keith, Sugarland, just some of the major acts on hand. Again, go to country500.com for more information and to purchase your tickets for the Country 500 Memorial Day weekend. Let's take a break here on the straight line. When we come back, Mr. 200 himself, Hector Rana Jr. will join us next here on the straight line on MRN.com. away dirt and grime and bring out your vehicle shine with super savings on O'Reilly Car Wash. Right now at O'Reilly Auto Parts, pick up a gallon bottle of O'Reilly Car Wash for $3.99. Clean, shine, and protect your vehicle with O'Reilly Car Wash on sale for $3.99 at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. I'm former crew chief and STP auto expert Steve Letart. Does your engine feel like it's down on power? It could be caused by deposits on fuel injectors, engine valves, and combustion chambers. An easy way to help clean up your fuel system and restore lost power is through the gas tank with STP Ultra 5-in-1 Fuel System Cleaner. One bottle contains three times the amount of cleaning agents versus the leading premium gasoline to help keep your engine running strong. STP, inside every great machine. One bottle contains three times by weight the amount of cleaning agents and 35 gallons of the leading premium gasoline. Grunt style. The American fighting spirit is in everything we make. We are 500 patriots and veterans strong, bringing clothing manufacturing back to the United States of America. Always moving forward, never retreating, never giving up. We are Grunt Style, and this we'll defend. Get yours at GruntStyle.com or on the track this week at Martinsville Speedway. You're staged and ready for another run on the straight line. Brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Welcome back to the straight line presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Hope you're having a great Thursday. Almost uh, the end of March. Hard to believe. Another thing that's hard to believe, Doug, is how fast the Pro Stock Motorcycles went this weekend at Gainesville Raceway in Florida. We've been talking about it for years. When is Pro Stock Motorcycle going to reach 200 miles per hour? And this first guest on the Racing Electronics Hotline today, he was the first one to go 200 miles per hour on a bike, Hector Arana Jr. Hector, welcome to the Straight Line. Straight Line, you know, I just want to thank you, Doug Herbert and Robbie. Thank you guys for having me on tonight. Uh, just a great honor to be able to be on a talk show with you guys. Hey, Hector, we're proud to have you on and, uh, and gosh, really proud of you knocking out not only the first 200 mile an hour run, but then the second 200 mile an hour run. Tell us a little bit about it. Obviously, your team is a is a family team, and you guys have been working your tails off for a lot of years. Uh, I, I was in the winter circle with your dad at Norwalk back ten years ago, and it was that was a that was a great time. Yeah, you know, I tell you what, we my father and I we've been working so. Our number one goal for many years now, ever since you know when we were started reaching one ninety eight. And we knew, you know, we got close enough to where it became uh, reachable. And now you start thinking, you know what? 200 is right there. We could, This is possible. We could do this. And from then on, my dad, being the engine builder he is and the competitor and the racer, and along with me, I, that's been our number one goal is to be the first to be to go 200. Uh, it's all he's ever talked about. All And to be able to finally be the first one to go 200 and to be able to bring that my father for lucas oil i mean it was just so amazing and i got to start off with the run so 
actually, let me start off with the day. Friday morning, we're in the pits. We still don't have our front headers for the bike. We don't have our front fairings yet because we hit our body style. And our front fairings haven't showed up yet. Around 10 o'clock, they finally show up from UPS. And we're mounting our front fairings and fitting our front exhaust pipes onto the bikes. Uh, as a matter of fact, my O2 sensor didn't even fit because it was hitting a part of the frame, so I had to just put a plug into where the bung was. So I don't even know what the tune-up was on the front. <laughs> and you know, we, we get the announcement from Denzel Spark Plugs that they're putting on the the 200-mile-an-hour club to the first 200 jacket. You know, I got to start off by thanking Denzo for putting on that program. Amazing. You know, it's we really need people like that to support our class, so it's very positive to to see that there's brands that want to support us. So it's that makes us feel good. And to be able to go out there Q two right away and get that, I mean, it was just incredible and it was shocking to us just as it was to you guys. I, I had no idea. I let go of the pop the clutch. The bike spun the tire so bad. We were just trying to get down the track. Then it drifted left because it was spinning the tire. And I just, you know, I, I leaned on the bike to correct it because we're trying to get as much data as possible with the new bike. And now we're slowing down. I'm coming around the corner, and I see Big Dave with NHRA, you know, jumping up and down with the 200, first to 200 sign. I'm looking, I'm like, could this be me? <laughs> I mean, I know we could do this, but Jimmy Underdog was way in front of me. And so I wasn't sure who had done it. So I'm looking at him. He's And we're looking around. Then I see my dad. and He was just about doing cartwheels because he had ran before me. And at that point, that's when I realized I was the one that just went 200. I mean, it was just totally, totally incredible and amazing to be able to do that. 11 career pro stock motorcycle wins, 23 final round appearances, and now you've got four of the fastest runs in, in pro stock motorcycle history. Just from a, from a perspective of, you know, a, an, an NHRA fan versus a driver, it's, it's, it's like that's that last barrier that NHRA has yet to get through is that 200 miles per hour on a bike. Just talk about, you know, a, as a fan, w what's it like seeing these numbers in this division that, you know, took so long to go from 199 up to 200? Uh, you know, as a fan, I, I have to say it's got to be amazing uh, to be – I can only imagine what it was like to be at, in the stands at that time. I'm, I, I, they had to go crazy because you're always waiting to see who's going to be the first bike to go into the six seconds when uh, they're in qualifying, you see, because the – some of the slower guys are in the front, and they're going seven seconds. And then you always see the first bike to go six seconds, and the crowd always goes crazy. And I just I couldn't imagine what it was like when they when the crowd saw the 200 come up on the scoreboard. It just it had to be incredible. It's like you said, it's the last big barrier. Everybody knows it. Um, that's where Kenny Bursting was the hundred, and uh, I just. For them to be able to Michael to break, like you said, the last big barrier and go 200, it had to be awesome. Uh, I tell you what, I had I never signed so many signatures uh, mm -hmm. since since my career of racing. Um, I had so many people just coming up for signatures. Uh, our T-shirts started selling like crazy. I had people just coming up, just wanting to shake my hand, say congratulations. It was. Uh, it was definitely, as a writer, it was a great feeling to see how many people were very supportive and excited to see us do it. Well, I'll tell you what, a lot of people were excited about it. And uh, for you to get not only that first 200 run, but the second 200 run, uh, your, you know, your team has been at the top of the game here for, for some time. And I think that 200, that really, uh, that set you in the, in the record books for a long time as well. There's nobody's going to forget that for any time soon anyways. Yeah, I tell you what. On Saturday morning, after we were over there, and after we went 200, we were we were polishing up the bikes, and uh, so I put a little bit of Lucas Oil Slick Mist on the bike, and my father and I were over there waxing the bikes up, making sure we could try to go even faster. 
sure enough, we go out there, and that's when we run 201. Was it the Lucas Oil Slick Mist that did it for you? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Well, Lucas has been with you guys for a long time, and that's a great, uh, great testament to one of your sponsors. Hector Arana, Jr., first pro-stock motorcycle driver in NHRA history to go over 200 miles an hour. Thanks for coming on the show with us, and uh, we'll hope to talk to you again after you win a race here coming up again real soon. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. The Lucas Oil Buell in Pro Stock Motorcycle Division, Hector Rana Jr. here on the Racing Electronics Hotline. We will take another break here on the straight line, and when we come back, the winner at Gainesville on Sunday in Funny Car, Fast Jack Beckman. He's next here on the straight line. Things happen fast in racing, and if you don't know where to look, you can miss it all. With Legend from Racing Electronics, you'll never miss another moment. Legend gives you live fan vision video, in-car cameras, and stats at premier national series events. And the next generation race scanner for unfiltered driver and crew audio at any motorsports event nationwide. Race fans have never been closer to the action. Welcome to the future of the fan experience. Learn more by visiting racingelectronics.com. Whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules tires will get you there. Whether you're running on dirt or running a job. Our dependable, high-quality tires are the perfect fit for your needs. For unmatched value, selection, and warranty with industry-leading road hazard protection, there's only one choice, Hercules Tires. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com or call 800-677-9535. Hercules Tires, right on our strength. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. If your wiper blades are worn and streaking, stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts and save $8 instantly on a pair of Trico Force wiper blades. Improve visibility and save money with Trico Force wiper blades. Plus, take advantage of O'Reilly Auto Parts' free wiper blade installation. O'Reilly Auto Parts, better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply, see store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. You're listening to The Straight Line, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Welcome back to The Straight Line, presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. I'm Robbie May, sitting in for Marty Huff this week. Doug Herbert is on board, as always. And up next on the Racing Electronics Hotline, I'm very excited to talk to this guy because he is so full of energy, and all the stuff that he does uh, in and out of the race car is just amazing to me. The winner of the Funny Car Division in Sunday at Gainesville Raceway, Jack Beckman, the Infinite Hero Foundation Dodge Charger. Jack, how are you? Welcome back to the Straight Line. Robbie and Douglas, how are you, my boys? <laughs> We're good, man. We're excited to talk to you. I'm excited to talk to you guys. Hey, you know what? Winning the Gator Nationals uh, is is always a good thing, and then this no, year a was a little one. bit yeah, special, I, right? I, I got, you know, I got uh, 29 national event wins, two Super Comp, 27 and in funny car and um man the gators is right up at the top there I, I don't know that i'll ever top doubling up in 2015 at indy when in the tracks shootout and the u.s nationals in the same weekend that's every professional racer's dream but the gator nationals man we've been going there for well that was the 49th anniversary and it's one that i've never even been to a final round so to close the deal was beyond awesome you set some history because this is the first time in funny car history that the number one qualifier has gone on to win the first three races of the season. So not only was it winning the Gator Nationals, you've also set some history for yourself. Eh, who cares? I mean, <laughs> honest to God, I'm not, I'm not saying that to be sarcastic. Who cares? That's a statistic that you go, wow, never knew that. In other words, the first three win winners this year also happen to qualify number one. I could care less. I got the trophy from the Gator <laughs> Nationals. <laughs> The quickest car won, and so that was what's really important. And the best part was it was Jack Beckman, right? Yeah, and it was <laughs> – let me tell you, my whole weekend was storybook. I flew out there Tuesday. I did media stuff up in Jacksonville Wednesday. And Thursday, I got to be a presenter at the International Drag Racing Hall of Fame Awards, and I got to induct Gary Densham into the Drag Race Hall of Fame. I got to present the Pat Garlitz Award to our late great uh, supporter, Terry Chandler, and her brother – Johnny Gray came up and accepted that. Um, I mean, so my weekend, I'm still a huge fan. So Envision, my weekend started out getting to induct one of my icons, Gary Densham, into the Hall of Fame. And my weekend finished with him handing me a trophy in the winner's circle. 
That's a pretty good. Uh, that's a pretty good week there. <laughs> it was a good time to be Jack Beckman. It was yeah. a good time to be Jack Beckman. And uh, other, uh, tell us a little bit, uh, Jack, also about the coin program. A lot of listeners will know that you do the coin program. You carry those Infinite Hero coins in the car. They go 300 miles an hour. You autograph them, sell them. The money goes back to the to the uh, charity and the foundation. Tell us a little bit about that and how fans. Yeah, can we get make one these those. medallions. If anybody's been in the military, they, they, the military calls them challenge coins. It's basically got your squadron uh, insignia on a coin you carry in your pocket. So we do something very similar. I take twenty of them every run we make in the car, and anybody that wants to donate a hundred bucks gets one. I'll sign it. I'll put the ET in the mile an hour. Unless we stunk on that run, then I just put the date on there. But fortunately, <laughs> this weekend we had a lot, a lot of good runs, and to date. Our coin program has raised over $300,000. That's just NHRA fans coming up and wanting a cool souvenir. And every penny of that goes into our grant cycle. And every penny of that goes to change injured veterans' lives. And I think I would estimate like an average race for us in coin sales would probably be somewhere around 4,500. You know, about 45 coins. We did 93 coins at the Gator Nationals. And it didn't hurt that we won the race. But let me tell you, the final round coins were sold out before our car pulled into the winner's circle. But that's $9,300 more that goes into the grant cycle that will change an injured veteran's life. That is awesome. And not only the Infinite Hero, but you, you've, been, uh, you've been a great spokesperson for breaks, for, our, for my breaks charity and, and uh, helping us there and, and just all the great things that you do. I thank you for what you're doing. You know, with Doug, Infinite you're Hero. saving really lives. I mean, honest place. to God, you're saving lives. You turned a double tragedy into a situation where there's a lot of parents that don't know that they won't get that phone call because of what you did with your school. In other words, that breaks program teaches people to drive better, to be more responsible, to be more responsible even as a passenger when their friends are driving. And I guarantee you, you've saved people's lives. So when, when your school rolls out to where I'm accessible, I love to come out and talk to the students. And I thank you for caring enough to do that. Well, that's always a good thing. Jack, it's, it's it's always, you know, since Terry Chandler's passing last fall, it's it's always, you know, emotional whenever you get close to, to being in Winter Circle. And I can't remember if, if you have won since, since you passed I have away. not. Okay. I, I won the Indy Traxxas deal, but I have not closed the deal. I won the last race when she was still alive, which was Norwalk last year. Yeah. And I have not been able to close the deal since then. And I did it here. And how about this, Robbie? Uh, the Gator Nationals last year, was the last race that Terry Chandler was at the drag strip. She flew out to the Las Vegas race, and we didn't know why at the time, but she was too ill to leave her hotel room. She never made it to the track, and ironically, Tommy Johnson won that day. But this is the first time her Infinite Hero car has won a national event since her passing. So it was awesome. And, and you know, any other time, I'd give her husband Doug the trophy. And, and Doug has decided to continue in her honor for three more years with both the Infinite Hero and the Make-A-Wish teams. But to me, Gainesville was a no-brainer. It was 11 years ago that John Medlin lost his son Eric in a testing accident Monday after that race. And you know, for John Medlin, every year he comes back to that race, he's got to deal with that thought that this is the place where he lost his son. But he toughs it out. He, he does everything that he needs to do. He and Dean Antonelli and Neil Strasbaugh are all three crew chiefs on the Infinite Hero car. The guys made fantastic calls all weekend long. When we rolled into the winner's circle, that trophy went straight to John Medlin in Eric's honor. Well, that is awesome. And, uh, yeah, I remember that day. And, man, that's, that to have, uh, you know, like you say, for John to be going to the race for the last 10 years and then getting that win for him, that had to be special. I'm sure he... Uh, uh, I'm sure he felt Eric with him this weekend, and that was really good to to have him uh, get in the winter circle with your team. Yeah, I mean, just on so many levels, this this might be my most gratifying win ever, just because so many things. Terry Chandler's anniversary, the Hall of Fame induction deal, losing Eric Medlin, his dad's my crew chief. We get back in the winner's circle there. Uh, I mean, just a lot of full circle moments at one race. Jack, you're, you're second in points right now after three events in Funny Car 21. I, you know behind what? I never looked, Robbie. Honest to God, I, I meant to look yesterday and my yeah. phone wouldn't get on the Internet. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. You're second, 21 points behind. A uh, couple of weeks off before our next race in Las Vegas, the first of two four-wide races in the month of April. Going from one four-wide four to two four-wides, is, is that going to be a little challenging for you guys coming up here over the next few weeks? 
Yeah, I'm not smart enough to figure it out anyway, Robbie. It doesn't matter. No, no, I love, I love the four wide. I'm not sure it should be a points race, but I love the format. I think it's crazy exciting. I know some of the fans complain it's too much to follow on TV, but you have to come witness it in person because you will never see or feel anything like that. Um, I enjoy the challenge. You, you know, I taught drag racing for the better part of 10 years. I still work closely with Frank Holly on things, and and. I'm good enough to realize that I'm a slow learner, so I work extra hard at this stuff, and I think that's why I've been successful at different formats, and I've won a couple of the four wides because I spend the time to study things and make sure there's no surprises up there, and it's just it's tough to describe to somebody what a regular NHRA race is like in person, and a four wide is literally twice the amount of ground pounding and nitro fumes out there, so I'm looking forward to it. I mean... Three wide, four wide, eight wide, I don't care. I just I just want to win a race. <laughs> the first one in the finish line still wins, going. right? That's what's most important. Yeah. yeah. You know what? It's the same trophy. Whether yeah. it's one wide or four wide, they give out the same Wally at the end of the weekend. Hey, Jack, one quick little thing. Uh, obviously, uh, you're a drag racing fan, but you're a car fan, car guy, too. So I've been following your, your uh, El Camino I, building. How's the I El Camino coming along? I literally just stopped. I was doing the brakes and stopped to call you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My buddy from, from Bear Brakes was over because I'm also not smart enough to figure that stuff out, help me bolt the brake kit. It's a 1968 El Camino, and before all my Mopar friends yell at me, Mopar didn't make an El Camino in 1968. It was my first car. My dad bought it in 1979 from the original owner. I bought it from my dad when I was 15. I took my driving test on my 16th birthday in this car. It was my first race car. Uh I went 1506 at 93 miles an hour, at Lubbock Dragway in 1986. I was in the Air Force. I was stationed out in that area, and I drove it to Lubbock and made my first run down the drag strip, and it sat for 20 years. I didn't start it for 20 years. In fact, for the last three years, it sat in our mutual friends, Roger and Karen Comstock's storage building. And Uh I told them six months. I don't know why they were upset it was three years. I thought that was pretty good. (laughs) But I was kind of over it until the car came home, and then all these memories came back. So I'm putting it back as a street car. I'm taking my time. It's going to be absolutely beautiful. I've had a ton of companies that have helped me out on this thing, but I'm trying to do it as an everyday guy. In other words, I'm bruising my knuckles. I'm the one that's getting frustrated if i got to fabricate stuff, and I'm trying to do everything myself as much as I can. And it's on my website. If, if you, your fans go on gofastjack.com, i got a photographic gallery there of all the progress. And, you know, I just I work on it when I can. i got to go uh, – do some kid errands in a little bit here and I don't ever want to miss a moment with my kids. I'm away from home so much, but I work on the car when I can. And we look forward to seeing the finished product uh, up on your website whenever you get it done. Jack, thanks for coming on with us. Uh, We appreciate it and congratulations on the win on Sunday. I will talk to you boys anytime because it always means we did something special. (laughs) Absolutely. That is Jack Beckman on the Racing Electronics Hotline. For three decades, Racing Electronics has been the number one choice for racing scanners, headsets, and the popular FanVision handheld unit. Racing Electronics provides the ultimate fan experience for drag racing fans. Stop by our trackside locations or visit racingelectronics.com for more information. Take another break. When we come back, we'll wrap up another edition of The Straight Line here on MRN.com. Stay tuned. Restore your vehicle's lost power by cleaning your entire fuel system with Chevron Techron Fuel System Cleaner. Right now, buy one bottle and get one free at O'Reilly Auto Parts, plus get double O rewards points on your purchase. Keep your engine clean with Chevron Techron Fuel System Cleaner at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. O, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. I'm former crew chief and STP auto expert Steve Latart. Does your engine feel like it's down on power? It could be caused by deposits on fuel injectors, engine valves, and combustion chambers. An easy way to help clean up your fuel system and restore lost power is through the gas tank with STP Ultra 5-in-1 Fuel System Cleaner. One bottle contains three times the amount of cleaning agents versus the leading premium gasoline to help keep your engine running strong. STP, inside every great machine. One bottle contains three times by weight the amount of cleaning agents and 35 gallons of the leading premium gasoline. Grunt style. The American fighting spirit is in everything we make. We are 500 patriots and veterans strong, bringing clothing manufacturing back to the United States of America. Always moving forward, never retreating, never giving up. 
We are Grunt Style, and this we'll defend. Get yours at GruntStyle.com or on the track this week at Martinsville Speedway. Welcome back to The Straight Line, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Welcome back to The Straight Line here on MRN.com. Robbie Mays and Doug Herbert. Hope you've enjoyed today's show. It is STP week, as you can see right down there here on MRN.com. If you're looking for more power under the hood, start at the gas tank with STP Ultra 5-in-1 Fuel System Cleaner. STP inside every great machine. That all accumulates Sunday with the STP 500, the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series race at Martinsville Speedway, 1 o'clock Eastern on the Motor Racing Network. Time for my new favorite segment of this show, as if talking to Jack Beckman and Hector Rana weren't fun <laughs> enough. And sitting next to you, Doug Herbert, red light, <laughs> green light. So let's cue that up. As always, red light, green light is presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Red light. Well, I think the red light has to be the explosions that we're having. The, you know, the, uh, this last weekend, the, you know, the worst one that we talked about earlier, Matt Haig and Robert Height blowing up in the semifinals. Uh, Matt Hagen having to break out his backup car and bring the backup car to the starting line to run the final round. I think the uh, here's some yeah, video I, mean, I, 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 I think right. that the that's actually uh, John Force's uh, incident. He oh, had I think Force. that was Saturday. Uh, John, John Force, Force too, same yeah. thing. I mean, he's been uh, you know he's hurt from these these crashes, and you know Force. I mean, uh, I love Force, but man, he's no spring chicken. He can't keep doing this every no. time. So that's the red light. Un unfortunately, all the carnage we've seen on track over the last uh, few races, and there's another super slow-mo shot of the force car going up uh, over the weekend. Green light for me is all weekend long and all season long, and, and pretty much for the last two or three years, the crowds at these events have just been outstanding. I heard a rumor, and, and it is just a rumor because I don't have it confirmed, but they said the Gainesville crowd on, uh, I think, Saturday was the biggest crowd that they've ever had at an NHRA drag race there was you know it was standing room only so yeah. yeah i think you're right that's a that is a green light that's a great thing you know when yes. you're uh you know i think any live sports they're they've they're struggling this day and age for uh you know for for fans showing up at the live events and i don't know why that is i love going to live events yeah. but uh i think our you know our younger the the younger kids i mean they're right they can get on their electronic device or whatever maybe that's what it is i don't know what it is but Drag racing is obviously uh, hasn't uh, you know hasn't hurt too bad from that, or at least they picked up because I mean they were hurting as everything else was a few years ago, and yep. the crowds have come back. I mean, drag racing is is really exciting in real life. I mean, those engines making over ten thousand horsepower, shaking the ground, uh, watching the crews work on the car. It's it's pretty fun and exciting, and the sold out crowds prove it. My first drag race was the four wides at Charlotte in 2016, and I got to stand down there behind the starting line and watch those cars go and. A fan for life. Yeah. So if you go to one of these, you will become a fan for life. It's called baptism by nitro. Is what yes, the, yeah. absolutely. And I got mine thanks to Marty Huff. Speaking of Marty, he will be back in the seat next week here on the Straight Line. I'd like to thank Hector Ronda Jr. I'd like to thank Jack Beckman for coming on the show this week. For Daryl Smith, for Jennifer Cochran, he's Doug Herbert. I'm Robbie Mays. We'll see you next week right here on the Straight Line presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. <laughs>